In this video, I'm going to talk about how mobile apps could help mass adoption of blockchain technology. All right. I'm going to tell you why I think that and then also show you, uh, you know, how you could build your own mobile blockchain app uh, and even some ideas that you could use to start your own blockchain based business and uh, with this strategy that I'm going to talk about. OK, so before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory from DAP University. And on this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then click the like button down below and click subscribe. And if you want to learn to master blockchain from start to finish, uh, I can show you how to do that step by step. All right, just head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started. Okay, so let's talk about how mobile apps could help mass adoption of blockchain technology. Okay, so I was thinking about this recently while I was working on a client project. Um, this was like a blockchain based application that had a lot of different parts to it. Uh, it had some smart contracts on the blockchain, it had a web application, but then it also had a separate mobile application, right? That was standalone. It, it, it basically allowed people to use the blockchain directly from the mobile app without installing any extra software or anything like that. Um, I had a really great strategy for onboarding new users. And it got me thinking like, hey, more businesses can adopt this strategy and help onboard new users who aren't familiar with how to use the blockchain, don't hold cryptocurrency, don't know how to you know manage private keys, don't know how to manage Ethereum wallets, all that kind of stuff, right? So that's a quick description of like why I was thinking about this. So let me further illuminate the problem here, all right? So problem, and then also solution, okay? So here's the problem. Basically, if you go use any Ethereum-based application, almost every Ethereum-based application, you have to go, uh, you need a few things. You need a wallet, all right? So we need a wallet here. So one, need wallet. And then also two, you need cryptocurrency. You know, for example, if I wanted to go use Uniswap, I need uh, a MetaMask extension on Chrome or maybe some other DAP browser. And I also need some cryptocurrency in my wallet in order to use it, which means I need to go, for most people, I need to go to a cryptocurrency exchange and buy some. I need a KYC, I need to give it my ID and a whole lot of other personal information. And frankly, this is just too much for most people. They're not, they're not gonna install a special wallet extension. They're not gonna go buy cryptocurrency uh, for most things, okay? And so this is not a criticism of Uniswap or anything like that. Basically, almost all Ethereum-based applications have this problem, okay? And, you know, it's, it's a problem really for regular users, not necessarily cryptocurrency traders, because some of them, um, you know, they're already familiar with how to use cryptocurrency, already know how to use MetaMask, and uh, this kind of leans more towards may maybe some of their preferences even, okay? Let's talk about the solution and how a mobile application can really help this problem for normal people, all right? So this is, like, you know, the problem that I described earlier is really a user experience problem. So how can we make the user experience better for new uh, users, right? So one would be mobile apps, right? So let me describe how the mobile app can help this. Let me actually describe the workflow that I implemented and that I think more businesses can implement to help bring on new users, okay? So let me describe the mobile app uh, onboarding workflow that I implemented and that I think can help more businesses. So step one basically is that the user just downloads the app, all right? And whenever they download the app, the app already has a mobile wallet built into it all right, that manages the private keys for them. And then step two is um, it actually gives them a little bit of ether in order to uh, pay the initial gas fees that are required for onboarding, all right? Pays them ether, a very small amount. It's really just enough to cover the transaction fees. So what do I mean by that, right? So basically, whenever they download the app, the mobile wallet automatically uh, manages their private keys. All right. So let's see here. Put this in here. Private key. All right. And this private key is totally secure. All right. So it, it, it's stored in secure storage on the device itself, and it never leaves the device. All right, so the private key is totally stored in their storage. Like, uh, we don't have access to it. And the other thing is it pays them Ether, all right, for gas fees whenever they uh, get started, all right? Pays, pays Ether. All right, it's a very small amount just to cover the initial transaction fees. So this is something that will really help onboard people because all they have to do is download the mobile app and then they're set up. 
They have their wallet integrated natively in the application itself. It can sign transactions. They can confirm the transactions, sign them on the device itself. And they have a little bit of ether to interact with the initial smart contracts that the application talks to. All right. So let's put that here in the app, talks to smart contracts. Yeah, smart contracts. All right. So now I'll pause here and say that there is a little bit of trust involved with this application, right? T totally. I, I totally get that. Um, but what I'm saying is there is a, there's a sliding scale of decentralization versus centralization and, and trustlessness versus complete trustlessness. And I think most users are probably going to fall, at least most mass adoption users are going to fall on this side of being okay with a little bit of trust. And, you know, this code can be fully audited. It can be open source where people can see what happens behind the scenes. Um, so there is an enhanced level of trust here. But this implementation is going to allow people to overcome the friction that's inherent with most Ethereum-based applications, all right? And this could be a, a sacrifice that some people are willing to make, like a trade-off they're willing to make in order to get up started fast, especially if the app provides them with a lot of benefits, all right? So let me tell you uh, what some of those benefits might be, and those will give you some app ideas for like your own business that you could create to employ this kind of strategy, all right? So one good example might be something like, um, let's just say a savings account, all right? A mobile savings account that's blockchain based. So basically what you could do, all right, let's just put that here on the board, savings account. Um, this is an application that has a use case that would actually benefit people. So, and this is another thing holding people back from blockchain mass adoption is having a really good compelling reason to even use it in the first place. So if you have good user experience and then also a really good compelling use case, it makes them want to download your app instantly and get started right now. So basically, what if you had a savings account that could offer them, let's say, like 10% interest, for example? You could hook into uh, one of the DeFi protocols and actually get this interest. What if you wanted to hook into something like Compound, for example, and take advantage of a competitive interest rate, all right? Now, I know the interest rates go up and down, but uh, there are definitely times when the, the interest rate on DeFi is much better than like your savings account. Like basically, if you have money parked in savings, uh, it's earning virtually 0% interest, but a lot of times the DeFi rates are uh, more competitive. So your pitch might be that the person who can just download this app and transfer funds uh, to this mobile application and, and put it into crypto. And then you basically have this just like mobile uh, savings account where they can do that. Now that does have an extra layer of complexity of having to like, you know, manage fiat currencies. All right. So let's say you want to build things simpler than that. And you want to have just like a regular uh, business where the person doesn't have to manage any kind of money. All right. They just want to use the blockchain and get some benefit from it and like use a mobile app. All right. So one good example could be like a decentralized uh, file storage thing, like Dropbox, for example. Right. So like, you have a mobile application that can take advantage of a lot of nice mobile features, uh, user experience type of elements like scanning documents, all right, upload them to a decentralized file storage system like IPFS, for example. The user doesn't need money in this case, right? Basically, all they need to do is download your app, scan the documents on their phone. They get onboarded with a little bit of ether to pay the gas fees to actually upload the documents and store the transactions on the blockchain itself, all right? And then they could even send these uh, encrypted documents around to other people using like public key cryptography where they can uh, basically, you know, send it to somebody else in an encrypted fashion and, and then the recipient can decrypt it as well. And then it can be completely decentralized. All they need are each application on each other's phones, right? And that uh, gets them from having to install any fancy browser extensions like MetaMask or anything like that, right? So those are some ideas how mobile apps could really uh, do a good job at help bringing on new users who don't want to go buy cryptocurrency. They don't want to install a bunch of extra browser extensions. All they want to do is install a new app on their phone. And people are used to installing new apps. It's not a really a big deal for them to get started. Okay. So I will say, uh, like I said, this is probably better for more mainstream users. Uh, people who are hardcore into decentralization aren't going to like this as much. Uh, totally understand where that's coming from. And my opinion on this has even changed a little bit over time, right? There's this sort of uh, spectrum of decentralization. You know, here's complete centralization and here's complete decentralization. And I think the the biggest um, sweet spot for blockchain adoption is kind of somewhere between those two things, leaning more on the side of decentralization for sure, okay? So uh, the last thing I'll say is my opinion has also changed a little bit on this uh, for what, you know, clients could and should do, right? So, uh, previously, 
when most people talk to me about building projects, uh, they want to, you know, they build a project and say, I want a mobile app. I would almost like try to steer them away from building a mobile app, mostly because there is all this redundant work of private key storage and private key management, which someone can just do inside their uh, browser with MetaMask by just installing an extension. Um, but uh, for some clients, this is actually a really viable thing that can help them get new users, especially depending on like what their use case is. All right. So my opinion is definitely changing this over time. So if that's something that you're interested in, just FYI, like let's say you're trying to build a project and you want to hire me to do this, um, you can just get in contact. My email is down below. It's Gregory at DappUniversity.com. All right. So I uh, hope you like this video. Again, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, click the like button down below. And if you want to master blockchain, step by step, I can show you how to do that from start to finish. Uh, just head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.